I'm Dom, the BCBA mom, and welcome back to my channel. I'm a board-certified behavior analyst, well-versed in applying ABA to our everyday parenting styles, and I'm a mom. More specifically, I'm a mother of a child with autism. And if you are a mother of a child with special needs, or you're just here to get more positive parenting tools to add to your toolbox, you're in the right place. Right into it. So last time we discussed two of the five ways to effectively implement reinforcement or a reward that's following the behavior. The first one is the reinforcement or reward must be valuable. Number two, the reinforcement or reward must occur immediately following the behavior. So these are just two of the five ways to effectively implement reinforcement so that it works. Reinforcement if it's not going to work. Ain't nobody got time for that. And we're going to continue where we left off. And we're going to start with point number three. And, and today we are going to apply some of these techniques that we learn to our everyday lives. Today we can apply this to a picky eater. Do you know a picky eater? Do you know a picky eater? Do you know a picky eater? Yeah. I have a few. So we can apply the tips that we learned today, for example, to our picky eaters or almost any situation you can think of with your kids. So number three is you want to explain the contingency. So let me explain what I mean by that. Have you ever had, have you ever had one of those mamas who just gave you that look? And you're all scared because you don't even know what you did wrong. Like you're looking like, what? Did I did I touch something? Did I forget something? Did did I like why am I getting this look, mom? And mom is just like That's not fair. That's not fair to anyone, especially to the kids. So make it plain and clear what your expectations are. I know. What a novel idea. And some people feel, some people may feel like, oh, I don't have to explain myself to a child. Mm, well, if you don't, we can just be stuck. Right where we are. Communication goes both ways. So we must explain these contingencies so that we're setting our kids up for success. We can do this by implementing the PREMAC principle, which just means once you have completed a less desired behavior, then you'll have access to a more preferred activity. Or once you've completed a less desired activity, you'll have access to a more preferred activity. I've also heard this referred to as grandma's rules, or I guess in my culture, it'll be big mama's rules, or just the house rules. This can also be called the if then principle. Whatever you wanna call it, this is what's gonna happen. These are rules that are set in place, that are clear, that the entire family is governed by. There's no changing these rules or this contingency. For myself, I have a rule that if I read my Bible plan devotion in the morning, then I can have access to Facebook or Snapchat. If a homework is done by dinner time, then you can have access to the iPad. This is a really effective tool to increase motivation or to motivate the child to work for the then or the preferred activity. The reinforcer shouldn't be a secret. It's not a secret. So let's apply this technique to a picky eater. So today we are trying three new foods. And as you can see, he's not enthused by it. You want the graham cracker? No. So this no. is when okay. I explain the contingency. 
As they read, if you eat your banana, your orange, and your graham cracker, then you'll have access to milk. Notice that I started off with really small bite-sized pieces, and that should be the same with any task you want your kids to do. You want it to be small and easily obtainable so they can contact that reinforcement. We want to set them up for success. So notice I don't repeat the contingency. Even though he's not eating any more of the foods, I don't repeat myself. I just wait him out. When he finishes all three, I immediately reinforce his behavior with verbal praise, and then I give him the agreed upon reinforcer, which is a cup of milk. I also added a straw, just for fun, and bubbles. So in the future, he knows that there's a really big reinforcer associated with trying new foods. If, then, if I eat new foods, then I'll get my milk yeah. and I can make it. Okay, let's get back into it. Number four, schedule your reinforcer. Mm. Hey, reinforcer, I think I can uh, pin you in on Wednesday and Wednesday at 4 o'clock, okay? That's not what I mean by schedule your reinforcer. Schedules of reinforcers are very crucial if you want reinforcers to work and if you don't want to have to use contrived reinforcers for a long time. It's really important that although we may be using items or activities to reinforce behavior, eventually we want to fade socially mediated reinforcement out and we want to replace it with just natural reinforcement. Um, if you want to reinforce effectively, you have to identify an effective schedule of reinforcement. There are four basic schedules of reinforcement. The first one is like, the for, for example, the first one is the FR or FR1. That just means after every behavior, you get a reinforcer. The second one is VR or VR6. That just means after every maybe six behaviors on average, it varies. You get a reinforcer. The third one is fixed interval or fixed interval one. That just means after every minute, interval means time. After every minute, you get a reinforcer. The fourth one is variable interval or variable interval 30. And that just means on average, every 30 minutes, you'll get a reinforcer. So the only fix is when you identify the number, variable is, eh, it could vary. So when you think about real life, a mom, and in reality, we're not, we're, we're not around our kids to watch every single behavior. So in real life, I like to use variable intervals or variable ratio. And I'll explain how to do that. It's really important when you're teaching a new behavior. When you're teaching a new behavior, you probably want to start with the fixed ratio of one. That just means every time that kiddo engages in that behavior, the one that you want to see more of, reinforcer, increase, every time that kid engages in that behavior, they get a reinforcer, FR1. One behavior, reinforcer. One behavior, reinforcer. So in the beginning, when you're teaching a behavior, it's really important that the child knows 
that this behavior is paired with this reinforcer and they go hand in hand. Eventually, you can begin to fade the FR schedule into something that's more loose. So instead of a FR1, you may say a FR5. Now they have to complete this behavior five times in order to get that reinforcer. Or if we're thinking about interval or time, first you have to complete your homework for one minute. After one minute, you get a reinforcer. You get. After another minute, you get a reinforcer. After another minute, you get a reinforcer. No one's ever gonna get any work done. That's not realistic. So what I would do is I would fade it and make it more natural. So after every 15 minutes, you get a reinforcer. After every 25 minutes, you get a reinforcer. Now, after every 45 minutes, you get a reinforcer. So this way I am fading the reinforcer or I'm increasing the delay to the reinforcer. In life, newsflash. I'm so sorry to break this to you. But in life, we don't get everything we want when we want it. So it's very important to teach delayed reinforcement by fading the time or fading the amount of behaviors that they have to complete in order to get the reinforcer. So just to recap. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Remember when you're teaching a new behavior, it's very common or it's very effective to use reinforcer immediate as possible. Um, you pick up a toy, you get a reinforcer. You pick up another toy, you get a reinforcer. You pick up another toy, you get a reinforcer. Once they've mastered that skill, you can fade it a little bit. I need you to pick up five toys and then you get your reinforcer. Now, that was great. Now I need you to pick up seven toys and then you get your reinforcer. Or we can change it to time. I want you to practice the piano for 15 minutes and then you get your reinforcer, which is a break. That was awesome. Now I need you to practice for 25 minutes. So, and so on and so forth. It's very re important to schedule reinforcers because you wanna set your kid up for success. Yes, we're talking about reinforcers and this is great and all, but the reality of it is they need to learn how to contact reinforcer without mommy or daddy or teacher there kind of contriving these situations. So the more you're able to fade it and make it just like a natural thing, you're really setting them up for generalization or you're just setting them up for this to work not only at home, but at school and any other situation. And this should work for a long period of time when you're not even there. It's all I have for you today, but I guarantee you, you do not want to miss out on the next session because it gets good, it gets better. We are going to start applying all of these techniques to almost any situation you can think of. So please comment below, give me some scenarios. We can like role play, we can, we can talk about it, and we can apply some of this ABA to your everyday in a practical way. Don't forget to subscribe and like my video and share if you're there. I know you're there. I can't wait to see you next time.